In 1971, this property located in Daigle, Maine was purchased by the current owners. At the time, it was an abandoned farmland that had been used to raise potatoes as well as to provide pasture for cattle and sheep. There was not a single tree on this entire property. By 1980, the fields had started to grow in raspberries, red osier dogwood and aspen. Rather than having the property grow up in these non-valuable trees, the owner contacted the Fort Kent Soil Conservation Office and under a cost-sharing program had, in 1982, the entire property planted in red pine. For the next five years, the seedlings established a good root system and then started to grow. Each year, the trees grew between 12 and 18 inches in height. By 2014, the trees were 40 feet tall and averaged 15 inches in diameter. However, in 2014, the property owners noticed that the new growth on the trees were drying up. In addition, the bottom limbs were also drying up. Each year, the trees were slowly and slowly dying. By 2017, several of the trees had been completely dried up. That year, the state of Maine tree pathologist came to the property and confirmed that the trees had two diseases, Cirrococcus shoot blight and Diplodia tip blight. Both diseases would kill all the trees in a few years. Through the Department of Conservation office and a local forester, a forest management plan was prepared for the property. One of the alternatives was to harvest all the trees and replant the property. In July 2018, a market for red pine opened at a mill on the Quebec border. The property owners contacted Fish River Logging Company about harvesting the trees. In addition, the company was to prepare the property for replanting in 2019. On September 4th, Fish River Logging brought in the first piece of equipment called a feller buncher. The machine does exactly what its name describes. That is, it cuts down the trees and piles them in bunches. Upon arrival, the feller buncher started to cut the trees immediately. One by one, the trees were cut down and laid down in bunches. The feller buncher head has a set of folding arms and a cutting blade at the bottom. The machine moves up to a tree, wraps its arms around the tree to hold it standing, and then a spinning blade cuts the tree close to the ground. It takes less than one second to cut a tree. The inch thick blade is spinning at more than 6,000 revolutions per minute. Depending on the diameter of the tree, the folding arms will hold more than one tree at a time. With these red pine, three trees were cut and held before being piled on the ground. The operator carefully lays the trees in piles. The piles of wood are carefully planned. Later, these trees will be dragged using a grapple skitter to another part of the property where the limbs will be removed.
One by one, the trees are cut and piled. Here, you have a better view of the folding arms that grab the tree just before cutting. In slow motion, you see the one inch thick blade cut through the trees in less than one second. As the tree harvester cuts forward, it leaves behind a line of bunches of trees. This is a view from inside the cab of the feller buncher. This is what the operator sees. is now close to the owner's house. The operator takes special care not to drop limbs or trees onto the house.
It has been two days since the harvester started to cut the trees. As you can see, all the trees have been harvested and all the trees are piled in small bunches. At the start of the third day of harvesting, all that is left is a small section in one corner of the property. You will note that the trees are all piled in small bunches. Red pine are very heavy trees and the grapple skitter can only drag a certain amount of weight. These are the last trees to be cut. In two and a half days, the 13 acres of red pine have been harvested and what is left are piles of trees on the ground. With the last tree being harvested, the area is now ready for the next phase of the harvesting process, that is, removing the limbs on all the cut trees. Two weeks later, two additional pieces of equipment arrive. The first is the grapple skitter, which will drag the trees from a specific location to where a limbing machine will remove the branches. Here, 
we see the grapple skitter dragging the bunches of cut trees to the limbing machine. You will remember that the harvester operator had neatly piled the bunches to make it easier for the skitter operator. You will note the heavy steel chains on the skitter tires. This is not only to provide extra traction to the skitter, but also to protect the tires as they go over logs and stumps. operator drops the bunches of trees near the limbing machine. This makes it easier for the limber operator to grab the trees and remove the branches. The skitter continues to bring bunches to the limmer until all the trees have been limbed. This is the limbing machine. It has a long arm that grabs the trees and then steel plates in the boom slide back and forth breaking off all the branches.
From inside the cab of the limmer, this is what the operator sees. The limmer operator sorts all the limb trees by species. This will make it easier for the next piece of equipment, that is the crane loader, to load all the trees of one species onto one truck. also cuts the top of the tree. Before the harvesting process starts, the mill that will be receiving the tree specifies the overall length of the tree and the smallest diameter that the tree will be accepted. In the case of these red pine trees, the mill will accept any length tree but will not accept anything less than 4 inches in diameter. If you look, you will see that all the branches and tops are placed in a pile. Once all the logs have been hauled away, a chipper will be brought in to chip all of these leftovers into biomass fuel to be used to produce electricity.
Once all the trees have been limbed and sorted, the next part of the harvesting process, that is, the loading of the trucks, will begin. Here we see the piles of logs and piles of branches after the limmer has left. On the right are the piles of logs waiting to be loaded onto trucks. And on the left are the tops and branches waiting to be chipped. The next part of the harvesting process is to load the trees onto trucks. The crane takes the limb trees from the pile and loads it onto a trailer. Here we see the empty truck approaching the crane. Because these are long logs, the crane will load the front of the trailer first.
Each log is carefully placed in the trailer to assure that the load will remain secure during the ride to the mill. Once the front of the trailer is loaded, the crane moves to the rear of the trailer and fills the back. From inside the cab of the loader, this is what the crane operator sees. Once the trailer is full, safety trains are placed over the load to secure the logs on the trailer. From the air, 
you can see the truck loading process. First, the front of the trailer is loaded. Then the crane is then stationed at the rear of the trailer and the back is loaded. Finally the truck is full and the safety chains are tied. The truck then leaves the property and heads to the mill. In this case, the mill is 110 miles away. Two weeks later, the final process of the tree harvesting began. The chipper and the excavator loader arrived and immediately began to chip the scrap wood, the treetops, and the branches. The chipper makes small shavings of wood that are loaded into a trailer and then hauled to an electricity producing plant. There, the chips are burned and used to produce steam to power electricity production. The chipper is fed by an excavator equipped with a grapple. The grapple grabs a handful of branches and feeds it into the chipper. A series of rotating steel teeth chips the materials into small shavings.
chips are then blown into a tractor trailer box. From the air, you can see the chipping process, starting with the excavator, loading the branches into the chipper, and then the chipper loading the chips into the tractor's trailer. Thank you goes out to Fish River Logging and their equipment operators for not only doing a professional job at harvesting the trees, but also showing us how tree harvesting is a series of steps. First the trees are cut, then the branches are removed, then the logs are hauled away, and finally the remaining scraps, tops and branches are chipped and hauled away. Tree harvesting is really a recycling process. That is, the mature trees are removed to allow for the next generation.